I recently had the privilege of working with Dr. Joe Lacaz, who is the inventor of the Rotex training system. This is used by a lot of the top long drive guys in the world. It's a great way to not only get loose, but to get your body active and primed, whether you're training speed, or you're going to play around a golf. I'm gonna take you through the three exercises that I recently added to my routine and I do every single day. The first exercise we're gonna work on is going to address two things. So in the backswing, as we wind up, we wanna create a big range of motion, okay? And then as we change direction, we wanna get the lower body moving out ahead of the upper body, creating a big stretch we call X Factor, and this next exercise is a great way to get two for one. Okay, Josh, this is global connection. What we're doing, we're connecting everything, your bones, your joints, your muscles, your fascia, your neurology, from your feet all the way out through your hands. Obviously, feet are the only thing that touches the ground, hands are the only thing that touches the uh, club, so we have to organize everything in between. Okay. Right, so I'm gonna show you how to step on this. Just step right here, and you can see that we have this one slanted in, this one slanted toward the camera. Okay. Go ahead and step on. Now you mentioned grip it like a golf club, yep. and then slide my hand down. Correct. Okay, right. so yep. pretty much internal, maybe a little external on the trail side. In golf stance, put a little bit of tension into that, and the reason that we're doing that, we're gonna be adding tension really soon through the feet. We already have it in the hands, through the arms, through the shoulder, down through the spine, and we're gonna be connecting that tension. Love okay? it. Go ahead and turn into a full back swing. Good. And then turn your feet inward. One, two, three. Relax your feet. And then turn more. Good. Turn inward with your feet. One, two, three. Relax your feet. Turn from your foot up through your knee, up into your hip. Turn inward with your feet, one, two, three. Relax your feet and always finish with the upper body turn. One, two, three. Love and it. Relax. Now, a couple of key things that you, you've focused in on with me was when I reset, making sure we give it a, a pause for one second. Before. Reason, reason four, good question. Reason four is this is called post isometric release, post isometric reset. We have to wait a half to a second to let the nervous system reset, and then we can turn further and further and further. Love it. And the way I view this is kind of like a backswing and downswing drill, right? Yep, exactly. um, one of the things that you, you cued me in earlier is as I went back, we wanted to make sure that when I actually changed directions, I didn't lower the left arm. Correct. The key was to keep this left arm yep. up and then actually mm -hmm. turn, mm -hmm. which creates a massive, yeah. a, a massive stretch to my body. So if you let yourself turn like this, then what you're doing is you're degrading that isometric contraction, right? You're still doing yourself some good, but not 100%. And why would you want to do it if you're not going to do it 100%? The next exercise is going to address a small bone in our ankle called the cuboid bone. If we wind our body up and we open that ankle up correctly, that's going to give us about 25 extra degrees of range of motion in our turn. Now, the hard part for a lot of people is this is something that is not easy to feel. Uh, my awareness was not great at first until I started working on this next move using the Rotex. Now we're gonna talk about something called centration. Okay. Right. And, and so we have something in the way we move, the way that we, we we're just gonna call this spin or transverse rotation. That's not a good thing to do in the golf swing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our body in position where we can't do that. And then we're gonna work strategies, and you're gonna work strategies on how you need to move. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-tension this. I'm okay. gonna point my foot about maybe 25 degrees inward from where I am, and I'm gonna walk over. It's not a circus act. I don't have to spin myself over here, and then carefully get on here. Now, my right foot cannot spin anymore. It can't turn like this. So what it's do locked I need? out. It's locked out. My ankle, my knee, my hip, that can't do any, anything. Okay. So what strategy do I need to use in my foot 
to make this motion right here. There's a bone in the foot. It's actually called the cuboid, right? And you turn up and around with that cuboid and you can see that that's the proper move because my knee is straightening and it's going up inside the instep of my right foot, not like that, Okay. right? So I'm gonna let you do this. So it sounds like you're, you're trying to get a little more range of motion from the foot, is, is that correct? There's 25 degrees more range of motion available to you if you learn how to use the foot. And, and where, what part of the foot should I focus in on? Where, where would you say it's actually Yeah, so from? if you go to the outside ankle bone, okay. it's the bone right in front of that and down, right in front of the heel. Okay. okay. All right, so I'm going to pop in like this. So we'll yep. start right here. Correct. Foot's on the center of the device. Yep. I'm going to spin it around to the yep. point it's locked out. Where it won't, won't go anymore. Okay. Right? Let me maybe Good. do it a little bit more. Yep. Okay. Good. Perfect. So we're there. Okay. So try to turn this way. Try to turn it. Will it go anymore? Uh, it won't I, go anymore. Right? Not going to go anymore. No. Yeah. Okay. So what strategy do you have to use to make this go up and around? Okay. Yep. So do you have any cues for me? Any, anything I should focus on? Yep. Try to rotate this part right here around the back of your ankle bone up to there. Okay. All right. So I'm going to turn back. Yeah. You got it. Perfect. How's that feel? It, it's interesting. Like the actual intent of where you kind of cued me in on, mm -hmm. I can actually feel that expanding a little bit more. Absolutely. And you're right. There is a lot more range of motion. Awesome. Okay. Good. So how would, I, how would I organize this into an exercise? Is it basically just turning back, or, or do you put this into to reps? What's your, what's your process around that? So first of all, this is, this is a pretty advanced movement right okay. here for people to learn. So I would spend a lot of effort in learning from here down, okay. learning, learning from, from that spot right there, how to turn that up toward there and have their knee do exactly what yours is doing, going up and around and inside the instep of the right foot. So it's not something we need to necessarily rep out, maybe just intentional, you know, reps at a, at, you know, to focus on that, yep. that backside expanding. Yep. Okay. Get strong in that movement and it, it's amazing, okay? Got it, so I'm gonna reset. Yep. And I'm gonna turn back, mm -hmm. feel that yeah. backside opening awesome. up. Yep. Love it. Mm -hmm. How many reps would you do in this particular exercise? Like if, if you're on there, like no more than about three to five. Okay. Because what we're doing is we're, we're teaching the brain to make the movement, right? We're, we're making a pathway to the brain to, to learn that movement, okay? Okay. So most recreational golfers, when they don't turn that way and they just spin, the only strategy that they have to complete their backswing is to lift their shoulders, which is a fatal flaw. It, it, it makes everything more complicated. It hurts the shoulders, it hurts the low back because the lat attaches into the low back, right? Like that. So when we do this here, and we learn how to use, th these are a little wide to me, for me, but anyhow, when we learn to use that one bone correctly, we never have to get to where we have to lift the shoulder. See that? Yeah. Right? All I'm doing is, is I'm driving my entire movement all the way up through my hands with that one bone. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, as, as you said, it, there was, you know, once I started focusing on it, there was way more range of motion. Absolutely. And actually coming off of it right now, just kind of making mock back swings, I can feel that ankle working a mm -hmm. lot differently yeah. uh, is, is how it in interacts with the ground. So really good, really good. Our final move of the day not only feels amazing on my spine, but it is tremendous in terms of training the body how to move from a sequencing standpoint. As we get to the top of the swing and we land forward, we wanna see the left hip stay lower, right hip stay higher. And as we move our, the middle of our body, this is gonna pull us into what we call right lateral bend, okay? For me, this was something that was a little bit tricky to feel at first. One, uh, because my motor pattern wasn't great, but then two, I didn't quite have the range of motion and the Rotex addressed both of those things. Okay, so now what we're gonna be doing is just placing the handheld on the wall. 
Uh, one thing I want to cover here real quick. A lot of people find that this slips. The secret to this is just keeping these four rubber feet on the wall with equal tension all at the same time. If one comes off, then it's going to slip. So we don't have to push in real hard. All we have to do is keep equal tension. So this exercise, what we're going to be doing is setting up, I like a golf grip for this, no matter what sport we're working with, just like that, trying to keep the lead elbow straight and then just whatever strategy, Josh, that you want to use to turn this here. Right now I'm turning it with my foot. Obviously it goes from your foot all the way up through your body, through your hands. So we're going to feel a little bit more hips. Yeah. And guys, this feels unbelievable on my spine. Yes, absolutely. And the reason it does is because you have tension through both of your feet. So both sides of your spine are loaded. And then I mentioned to you, I like to do some back swing stuff sure. with it as well. Absolutely. You can yep. see I just lost, yep. mm -hmm. lost the pressure yep. points. Yeah. So back. Yeah, for sure. Great footwork there. Awesome footwork. Now, uh, one of the things you cued me on earlier was I was a little closer to it. Yep. You like to see people stand a little bit further away. Yes, um, for not specifically for a golf swing. But you're, but you're connecting more tissue. Here, you're completely leaving your elbows and your wrist out of the equation. Okay. I wanna con connect tissue from your feet all the way out to your hands, your shoulders. So if you're bent like this, good and bend, then your shoulders aren't, aren't in the right position to create max load. Okay, so it's, it's creating more tension, more stretch. Correct. Okay. I don't like the word stretch. Okay. <laughs> right, more, more activation, you're, you're getting those muscles to work. There you go, good. Awesome. Really, really good stuff there. Special thanks to Dr. Joe Lacaz for spending some time with me and sharing some of his knowledge. If you're interested in purchasing your own Rotex system, be sure to click the link below. I can't recommend Rotex enough.